Nuts and bolts with Tone here, guys, and welcome to my channel. Today I have a tool from Top Don. It is called the Top Scan Pro. Now, this is a Bluetooth dongle that you hook up to your car, you get your smartphone or smart tablet, and you connect to the dongle. You can go through this tool, through your, your phone, tablet, however you connect, and you connect to your vehicle. Toyota, Mercedes, it doesn't matter. Now, you can go in, and I'm going to show you in this video, you can look at trouble codes, you can clear trouble codes, you can use bi-directional controls, and you can graph data and even record it while you go for a drive. Let's go check it out. All right, so once you've installed the software, you're going to go with whatever manufacturer. So I have a Toyota. I have a 03 Camry. <clears throat> so it won't auto detect a 03. Usually that's a, a much older. Uh, most of the, even the snap on scanner and stuff, they don't auto detect an 03. So I'm going to have to manually enter it. Let me get it set up. Well, it's somewhat auto ID'd it. It brought up a list of everything, and it just asked me if it was a Camry and what year. So here we are. So we're going to go ahead. So right here, I'm going to use the auto scan function, and that's going to go through all the modules and scan for DTCs. And it will tell you if you have any DTCs in which computer. All right, so here we can read DTCs, clear them, look at the data stream, look at the act. We can do active test and special functions. So let's just go to active test. Now this top scan costs a hundred bucks, so you can't beat that. So let's see what it pulls up for this. All right, let's just go, let's go with the AC clutch. Let me go under the hood. All right, so here we are under the hood. AC, AC compressor is right there. So let's just see. So it's asking us what kind of data we want to see. So let's just go and So you could you could hear that turn on and not only did, could you hear it turn on but the fans turned on. Let's try that one more time make sure we can hear that. And then here we are, we can look at the data. So you can see right there, AC clutch on, AC clutch off. So that's just the first test. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty simple little test. Now there's a 2003 Camry. So there's not a lot of functional tests that you can do, but if you had a snap-on scanner or an Autel scanner, this is the functional test you're gonna be able to do. No different than this less than $100 dongle or a $4,000 scan tool. You still have the same functionality. What I like about Top Don products is that you have the ability to add any PID to any test, whereas Snap-on will select a select number of PIDs that they want you to be able to look at. And sometimes there's a PID that Snap-on doesn't give you the ability to look at that you need to see. Well, let's look at engine RPM because this doesn't have an O2 sensor. So we're going to go here for engine speed and we're going to go to selection here. So the current value, it's at 730 right now. So we're going to, right now it's in numbers, right? So when we were at the last screen, it just showed numbers. So we can go to graph and then we can back out of here. And now we can look at what the graph is for the RPM. We'll do some snap throttles. And then we have this button here to make it a bigger graph. And now we can really see it. You can also combine multiple data pits together. Now it's really hard to tell in this specific scenario, but I selected accelerator pedal position number one and number two. So accelerator pedal they, they use multiple sensors inside of the assembly and it uses them to cross-reference each other. So one should read a certain 
If one reads one value, the other should read a certain value and they should cross each other. So here I'm going to do some snap throttles and you can see they're so close to each other that you can almost, you can't almost even tell that there is two different values there. So now let's look at something different. Let's look at misfires. Let's say the vehicle has a misfire. So what you can do on misfires and anything that you want to look at if it happened. So when you're looking at a data pit and you're looking at whether it's like zero, all the misfires are zero. Well, it's always going to report what it sees. So if there was a quick misfire, if it doesn't happen within the time that it looked at it, it's not going to report it. So you want to scope misfire data. And then if you have a misfire, it'll show up. So we're going to scope all four of the data pids for cylinder one through four. And then that way you can go drive it. So let's say you had a misfire on cylinder one and you had a code for cylinder one. Well, you're going to swap your coil for one to four. And let's say you're going to swap your plug to three. Notate everything you swapped it to. And then you're going to set up and you're going to graph all the cylinders. And now normally, if you didn't have this ability, you would have to go and try to drive it until it set a code. Well, it has to misfire quite a bit before it will set a code. So in this aspect, we've set it all up. All cylinders are graphing and we're going to go drive it. Let's say it happens at 3,800 RPMs. You're going to go and drive it at 3,800 RPMs. You're going to come back and look. And let's say all of a sudden now you scroll back and cylinder four shows two misfires. Well, then you know that the coil you moved to cylinder four wasn't misfiring. Cylinder four was not misfiring before. Now you've swapped the coil. And so now you know the misfire followed the coil. The coil is the problem. So then once you're done scoping data, and let's say you just want to get back and look at data pids, you just go back and you click on the same button that you clicked on before, and you're going to hit the data pid button right there, and you're going to hit back, and then boom, you're going to be out of it. Or you can hit restore defaults, and it will restore it back to the data pid. And it's as simple as going like that from data to graphing. All right. So now let's say we're out driving it. We're looking at the, the data there. And we were looking at the misfires, but let's say the ABS light turned on. Oh, okay. So let's go pull up ABS. So here we are here. It's going to give you a bunch of messages, different, different, uh, different types of messages. So you can go here, you can read your DTCs, you can clear them. You can look at a data stream. Uh, so let's do that. Let's look at data stream. Let's look at one of the most common things that you would look at ABS for and scoping data. Anyone guess what that is? Wheel speed sensors. That would be the number one thing that you want to scope ABS PIDs for. Let me get this loaded up. So we're going to set this up. We're going to select the left front wheel speed sensor and the right front wheel speed sensor. So now... It depends on the severity of the problem. Sometimes it's really easy to spot the problem and you can scope both sensors and you can go drive it while looking down at a scan tool and you can see irregularities in the two data pits. Or let's say you see one moving smooth and the other one is real hashy or it's glitching out. Then you know that one's failed. Well, let's say that you just can't tell by a quick drive or there's a lot of traffic. For whatever reason, you can't look down at a scan tool. Well, there's a record function. So you're gonna set it up, whatever you wanna look at, you're gonna hit record, and you're gonna go drive it. And then we can come back and we can review the data and determine whether we have bad wheel speed sensors and we don't have to look at it while we're driving. So now it's gonna record whatever you however you selected it to record so if you were graphing two pids it's going to record two pids graphing if you were graphing four pids it's going to record four pids graphing and then you can go back and look at exactly what you set up to record all right now it's starting to drive So slightly different, 
I was turning and going down to the end of the street and making a U-turn. There's nothing wrong with this car. This is showing you how you can use the two. You can even combine the two, go drive it, and the two should stay pretty darn consistent as long as you're not turning. The front wheel should still spin close to the same. Now, after watching this video, I think for a hundred bucks, this is a tool that everyone is going to want to have. At the very least, you're going to want to keep one of these in your glove box, in your center console, in your trunk, whatever. You grab the dongle, plug it in, get your phone out, boom. You're checking your codes. Maybe your AC doesn't work. You turn your AC on and off just to see what's going on. If you live in California or maybe Arizona, your AC is a must. So that would be something you might want to check in a, in a pinch. So anyways, thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.